Hey everyone and welcome back to another Power Soccer Shop tutorial. My name is Reed and today we're going to be looking at how to get into the onboard programming on the Rnet joysticks. With the joystick powered off, you're going to want to hold down the horn button while pushing the power lever forward. You will hear the initial startup beep and then right after that you will hear a secondary beep. When you hear this, let go of the horn button. You will hear a third beep and that's when you want to release the power button and then it should start up into the onboard programming. Let's go over that one more time. Now that we're in the onboard programming menu, uh, we're going to show you how to adjust the speed settings. So on top there, go to the speeds. You can see we have forward, reverse, and turn. Click on forward, and you have your profiles 1, 2, 3, and 4 on the top, and 5 is on the right side if you keep going. Using the little rabbit turtle lever on the right side, you can turn these settings up and down. When doing this, make sure to only change one setting at a time so you can remember which one it was, just in case you need to go back and change it if you don't like it. To get out of the onboard programming menu, you can repeatedly press left on the joystick, or you can turn the joystick off and on again. I wanted to go over the programming screen. You can see on the top we have the profile selection highlighted in red. Each one of those columns will only affect that profile, so you can see on the right, we have the green rectangle. All of those settings will only affect profile 4. On the left side, you can see we have the maximum and minimum indicators. The up arrow is a maximum indicator, and the down arrow is a minimum indicator. We'll go over this in more detail in the next section, but as of right now, I just wanted to note that you don't really need to adjust the minimum settings because you really won't be utilizing those at all. Another common question that we get is why can't I turn down my settings? I'm going to go over two of the common reasons right now. You can see that the maximum acceleration is set to 90 and cannot be turned down. The reason for this is because the minimum acceleration is also set to 90 and the maximum cannot be lower than the minimum. So what we need to do is turn down the minimum setting in order to turn down the maximum. Another common issue is forward and reverse speed. You can see the max forward speed is set to 20 and the minimum is set to 10, so we should be able to turn it down, but we're still not able to. This is because the reverse speed cannot be higher than the forward speed, so if we go into the reverse speed section, we can turn down the maximum reverse speed, and now we should be able to turn down the maximum forward speed. The second thing I wanted to talk about is maximums and minimums. The setting with an up arrow is the maximum and the setting with a down arrow is the minimum. So you can see for profile 1, the maximum speed is 20 and the minimum is 10. So directing your attention to these little yellow bars here, um, right now with them turned all the way down, this would be considered the minimum setting. So the speed would be set at 10 because that was the minimum setting. And if we were to turn them all the way up, this would be the maximum setting. And we said that was set at 20 and anything in between will automatically adjust in between those two. So if we were to set it in the middle, it would be set at 15. The last thing that we're going to go over is throw and deadband. Both of these settings are kind of personal preference, so I'm going to show you where they are, what they do, and how to adjust them, and then you can decide whether or not they're right for you. I made this little graphic here to try to help explain the difference between throw and deadband. Starting with throw, you can see the red ring in the graphic. Um, if you turn down the throw setting, that ring will actually contract. So let's say you're not able to push the joystick forward all the way. You can actually turn down the forward throw so that if you were to only push the joystick forward half of the way, it would still register as 100%. Deadband is also very similar to throw, but it starts from the inside out rather than the outside in. So the more you turn up the deadband, the more that blue ring will expand in the center. So one thing that this can help with is jerkiness. Um, if you're having issues where your chair is jerking around while you're stationary, you could try turning up the dead band so that the joystick will not register those very centric movements. And you'll have to move it a little further out of the way to get it to register movements because you're expanding that dead zone in the middle or the dead band. And as you increase that setting, the band will increase in size. Now I'll show you how to access these settings. You're going to want to go to Controls, Joystick, Throw Detail. 
you can see that the throw has a separate forward, reverse, left, and right setting, so you can adjust all of those individually, whereas the deadband is one singular setting. Like I said, these settings aren't really necessary for most players, but they are there in case you need to use them. Another common question that we get asked all the time is how do I stop my chair from being so jumpy and jerky? Two settings that you can adjust to combat this is acceleration and deceleration. Acceleration will be how quickly your chair takes off and deceleration will be how quickly your chair comes to a stop. So if you are having issues with your chair jumping around, you can play with both of these settings and try to find a combination that works for you. The last thing that we're going to touch on is joystick calibration. If you go all the way down to the bottom of the programming menu, click on system, in there you should find joystick calibration. It will run you through a little prompt where you have to push the joystick forward, left, backwards, and right. And after that's completed, the calibration process is done. So if you're ever having any issues where your chair is slightly drifting off into one direction while you're trying to go in a straight line, or if you ever install a new joystick, it's always a good idea to run the calibration afterwards. Thanks for watching, and if you have any other video ideas like this one, feel free to let me know and we will get them made as soon as possible.